Well, good afternoon. It's Wednesday. It's about four o'clock in the afternoon. Didn't make any money at work today. Only did two, uh, three little bitty. I only did three little calls today. Didn't make any money, so I figured I'd come home and make some money. Today we're working on an 03 Chevy Venture. It's an older lady that I know. She's had this van forever. She's pretty rough, but it runs good. But she had a problem. You can see down here, there's your water pump right here. See that pulley moving? That ain't supposed to do it. Making some noise. This is a pretty easy, straightforward job. It should take a few minutes to do it, but since I'm gonna be video camera it for videotaping it for you, it's gonna take a little longer to do it. Basically, the easiest way to do this, I mean I can get in here with wrenches and stuff, but the easiest way to do this is take this cross member frame uh, support frame here, bore out. I can't talk, I'm sorry. Take the electronics, take the battery out of the way, and that opens up. Because all you gotta do is take off them four bolts right there. Off that pulley, and then you got bolts behind it for the water pump. It's real simple, real easy. Got my drain pan down here. Kick it up underneath there in place there to catch some of it. Now this old van had the Dex Cool in it. And I'm not a supporter of Dex Cool at all. I think it's the worst antifreeze they can use. And I told her we need to just go ahead and switch it out to the green antifreeze, but she's stubborn and she wants to stay with what that came with the factory, so. But if you know anything about Dex Cool, it likes a, uh, um, glob up in the radiator and everything and tear stuff up but you know hey it's her car I'll do what she wants she ain't got much money so we're just gonna take care of it real quick here let me get some tools out here as you can see it was sun was shining today but if you can see up there we got dark clouds so I'm fighting the rain I'm trying to try to get this done before it rains on me you know we've had what two days this will be the third day of rain I'm sick of it but let's see if I can make a couple dollars here. I'll be right back with you. Now, if you know anything about me, if you ever watched any of my videos, I drive tow trucks and I work on cars. I've done my fair share of wrenching, using wrenches. So if I can use air tools, oh, I'm bringing out the air tools. We're not gonna wrench anymore. Unless I have to. And trust me, I don't have to. Slide that bar out of the way and throw it over the way. Get all this junk out of the way. Now we're just gonna take the battery out of the way. Look, using a wrench. Well yeah, you can fight with them bolts on that water pump with a wrench, but why? Why sit there and fight with it? I'm not going to. It looks like the sun's trying to come back out on me. Come on, get up out of the way. battery out. If 
you know anything about batteries, don't set it on concrete. It's bad for a battery. Move this thing around here. So get a better view of what's going on. Okay, one trick that I can tell you when you do this, don't take the tensioner, don't take the belt off. Break the bolts loose before you do the belt. The tension on that belt will help hold the pulley still. Just break them loose. Now you can break the tensioner loose. Hold on just a second. Okay, I'm going to try to do this with one hand if I can. Sometimes it's not the easiest thing to do here. So bear with me. Anyway, the belt tensioner on this van, on this van, particular van, is way down here. And it takes a ratchet. Just pry it up. Uh, hold on, let me get a better angle. I'm sorry folks. I'm going to do this one handed. It's kind of fun. Be nice if I had a, you know, somebody out here with a different set of hands, but like one of my favorite shows is Flying Sparks Garage. You know, with that supermodel looking woman owner working working on cars. We'd all love to have something like that, but we don't. Got to get it in the hole. That's what, here, just pull up on it, release the belt. And I'm just going to leave that ratchet hooked to it. I'm not even going to take it off. I'm just going to leave it hooked to it. Because I'll be back at it here in a few minutes. Okay, trying to get you the best view I can of this thing, folks. Sometimes it's not the easiest thing to do here. Just go through and take all these bolts out. If you have any doubts about yourself, take your phone and take pictures of everything. That way you know how it goes back together. You know, most Chevrolets, you got to piece of plastic here that's got the belt rotation on here it shows you the belt, the belt route sorry can't even talk shows you the, the direction the belt's got to go on what pulleys go through oh okay now she don't want to come off see that's pretty dirty of her let me go get her let me go get a attitude adjustment tool Sometimes you gotta give things attitude adjustments. I don't mind doing it. I don't think that thing's pressured on pry it on there. I gotta put a pulley on that thing to get that thing off. Sorry about that, it needed an attitude adjustment. Basically I took my hammer and just beat around the outside of it a little bit. I took my pry bar and popped it off. The reason why, it was kind of rusted. See how that water pump's rusted? I don't know if you can hear that, but that's the bearings in there. This would be a good time to drain the radiator fluid. So we've got it draining there. Getting ready to switch tools here. Down my big air ratchet. We're gonna bring out my little bitty air ratchet. The reason is that these are little bitty bolts, five sixteenths or 
what is it, uh, eight millimeters. I think it's about right, but they don't take a lot of abuse. So if I put my big my big air ratchet on, chances are you're probably going to break them. Now I wouldn't just put the air ratchet on and hit it. I put them on there and break them loose first before I actually put the air to it. So that way you know they're broke loose and you're not taking a chance of breaking them damn things. So one thing you do not want to do is be sitting here drilling and tapping out a freaking bolt in that aluminum casing. It's not no fun. All right, gotta go get him an extension. Sometimes things can be a pain in the rear end. Just don't get dis discouraged or however you say that. Just take your time. Find the right path and do it up. Do it up. Man, come on now. Put it in the button. Told you not to hit the button yet. Just like that. Now after you do that, then hit the button. Be really careful you don't lose these little boats. I mean, them things are little. Got it off. Make sure you go through there, make sure you got all your bolts out. One, two, three, four, five. Should be about five of them. Right, make sure the drain pans are either. And sometimes they like to be stubborn. Just drove it here. And that's why she'd be bad. Usually when they go to bad like that, making noises, whatever, usually they start leaking. But for some reason this thing never did leak any fluid. Now, if you can see around here, it's still got some gasket on here. It's this black stuff here. You want to get that off. Now, you can use a scraper, you can use a razor blade, you can use whatever you want. But make sure you get it off. Myself, I use this tool right here. Get these little discs right here from O'Reilly's. And it cleans it right off. It makes you shine. Love this little whizzy wheel. Best thing to use, in my opinion, to clean. And I've used razor blades and scrapers and been here all day long doing this. Like I said, this only takes a couple minutes to do. But I gotta move the camera because it's shooting water up and I don't wanna get water all over my camera. Can't afford another one. So I'll be back in a second. As you can see, 
That's all cleaned up. See how shiny that is? Good and clean. Took me about two minutes to do it with that with this tool right here. Can't beat it. I love that tool. My other favorite tool is this thing right here for hose clamps. Love this tool. I'll use that here in a minute. We're gonna have to do a radiator flush on this thing. Because that stuff is so nasty. I just don't feel comfortable not doing it. First I gotta get all the water out of this thing. And if you don't know what you're doing, these things do come with some directions. I mean, if you're one of them people that can read directions and understand directions, I mean, one size is in Spanish. I think it's Spanish. Please don't forgive me if I told you wrong. The other one's in English. I mean, you can go through and do all that. I'm not. I don't read directions for nothing. That might be the reason why sometimes stuff is messed up. But now what you want to do is make sure this thing is good and dry. Run your finger across it. And my favorite stuff to use is this gray silicone. I mean, yeah, they say you don't have to use silicone, but why take the chance? That's my philosophy. I am a firm believer in silicone. Sometimes a lot of stuff says it doesn't, but like I said earlier, why take the risk? My opinion is just giving a little extra protection. Now you don't need a lot on here, so don't just go in here and just goob it on. A good thin layer, just enough to help it seal. Ain't like I'm doing the intake on this here where you want to make a bunch of it. Just a little bit to help it seal is all you want to do. I mean, yeah, some people don't use silicone. They say you don't have to. I can already see the comments now where people are coming through they're saying that but that's on them they can do it on their own project this is my project and in my project i'm not using silicone i'm using silicone so for the haters out there do it your way i'll do it mine you know because everybody's got an opinion on how things ought to be done because their granddaddy's daddy grandpa friends of a friend Showed them this way, and this is the only way to do it. Or they got high one day, and their friend did this, and this is how it's done. I don't care how you do it. As long as it's done, man, it's done. It's a whole lot cheaper than taking it to, an, to a shop store and having them paying them to do it. She called around. They wanted $350 to do this. This will take about 30 minutes for an average person, about 30 minutes to do it. Maybe 40, 45 if you're using regular tools, you're not using air tools. But like I said before, I'm not that kind of person. I'm going to use some air tools, one way or the other. Set that gasket around there and find out where she sits pretty. She's only gonna fit on her one way. So just turn it to you make sure you get the line the uh, uh to get the holes lined up. I miss it. Nope. Like I said, she's only gonna line up one way. That right there, my friends, I think I do her. Oh, I messed up. That, was, that wasn't right either. So just keep playing with it till you figure it out. And right, and right. Sometimes these are a little tricky, man. I mean, sometimes they are tricky, tricky. Yeah, sometimes they fight you all the way. All right, we figured it out. You know how I figured it out? I'm retarded. That's how we figured it out. I wasn't thinking about it. Anyway, if you look here, this has got a tab. That's got a tab. That's how it lines up, just like that. 
But you know, I'm pretty stupid, so sometimes I amaze myself so I can even get anything done. Okay. Now, the trick is to line this bad boy back up to the proper holes. Put it right way, Donald. Tell me, nah. You gotta line her up the right way. And the same way on the water pump. It only goes on her one way. So just keep playing with it till you find the right way. And my friends, I think that right there is the right way. Oh, dirty dog. My hands off of it for a second. That's pretty dirty of it, wasn't it? I think. I don't know what it's thinking. I took my hands off over a second to get the screw started. Make sure you go around here and make sure you get all your screws started before you do anything else. Do not crank it in with an impact. Trust me, you might be off. Is that thing starting? Yeah, if I'm feeling I'm off. I'm gonna lined up. Now, after you get all your bolts started, I don't know if you can tell in that camera, I hope you can. We're gonna come in here and we're gonna tighten these down. This does not take a lot of pressure to tighten down, folks. Please, do not over tighten these things. Just snug them, that's all you need. Just give them a little snug. Just a little snug and jump around in a pattern. Just don't go in one way. Jump around a little bit. Ah, I missed the boat. Just a little pattern. Let's jump around a little bit. And it came off. Trying to do an angle I couldn't do. But I tried it. Sometimes you get lazy, you know? I'm like everybody else, I get kind of lazy. There's a bullet. Just snug them up. Nice and back. Now, what I like to do is take the airline off so that way I don't hit the button by accident because that'd be retarded. Just give it another little torque. That's all we're doing. Just give it a little bit more. And you'll feel them go tight. When they do, just give a little extra and call it a day. Yeah, I mean, you can bring out a torque wrench and figure out what the torque is on it. I'm not going to. The only thing I torque down is head bolts. Other than that, I don't torque nothing down. Unless it's something really major. That's the only thing I'm going to torque. I'm gonna waste my time with it. Bottom bolt's kind of a butt booger, just a little bit because of the angle. There she is. That's the end of that story. So how easy it was to get that water pump off, put back on. That's it, man. Like I said, 30, 40 minutes and you'll be done. 
It's taking me a little while longer because you know I am videotaping and messing with you guys. Always make sure they ain't got no grooves or nothing on this water pump because I want to tear up the belt. And this thing feels pretty good to me. Feels like a winner to me. Line up the top part. Now this is fun, you know, when you can't see it, you just got to kind of feel for it. There you go. Now this water pump, does, I mean this pulley doesn't have to be exact. It'll just bolt right up. Four holes there, so you ain't got to worry about trying to line it all up and do all that nonsense. But do go around and put all the bolts in before you tighten it down though. all four bolts back in it bring back out my bigger my bigger air hammer air ratchet I mean crank them down now I would just snug them up real good for the first time till we get the belt back on it Cause you see the belt, the t pulley just gonna turn. So we're just snugging them. Snug them up real good. Okay, here comes the fun part of this deal. And I hate doing them, the serpentine belts. I don't know why, they just bother me. Like I said, here's the route of this thing. So you always wanna make sure you use that, go by. You don't wanna put the belt on backward off. Because that would be real, real bad. Okay. All right, as you can see, I got the belt back on here. Now you gotta do is just reinstall everything you just tore apart. Which is sometimes easier than said than done. Uh oh. Another good tip I can give to you when you put all this back together, clean your battery ends. Especially side post batteries because they always lose connections. You're already here, so just take the extra couple seconds and wire brush them, clean all the junk off of them, make them pretty. We'll save you a whole lot of hassle later down the road, trust me. Now after that, start this thing up and let it run just for a couple minutes. What you want to do is make sure the belt is rotating around there like it should and it's staying out where it should. It ain't moving all over the place. Got the keys are in the garage. Just want to make sure the serpentine belt pulleys down there all turning like they should. The adjustment pulley is moving back and forth. Island pulley is looking good. Well, I think we got a winner. Now we're not going to let this run long. Cause I gotta clean this out. I gotta do a radiator flush on this thing and try to get as much of this junk out of here as I can. So on with another process. 
as you can see, this is the nasty Dex cool stuff I took out of it. It ain't but water. It's junk. So I had to move my van. Because so I didn't want to sit here on the asphalt and water run down into my garage. So I brought it over here in the gravel and the dirt. Most of these vehicles have a drain underneath on the radiator. This one does, but it's all kinds of messed up and I wasn't going to break the radiator. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take off the top radiator hose over here. This is the top radiator hose. And I'm just going to turn on the water faucet and let it feed itself. And we're going to flush this thing out. Well, as you can see, we got water running in the top radiator hose here. And the water will come out of that. Basically feeding the whole system. You hear that noise? That's a serpentine belt. It was bad. I was hoping to make it through. But she's gonna have to go get another one. But we're just trying to get it to flush out now. Now there's all kinds of different ways to burp this stuff, to burp this, burp this system. You can play around with the hoses and all that. My favorite thing is this thing here. Got it at, uh, what did I get that, Napa. I think I paid 40 or 50 dollars for it. It's got this little plunger I can get in here and close it off. If you look in there, it's kind of hard to tell, but you can see bubbles coming up and how it's kicking it up. It's a whole lot less of a mess. Anyway, it comes in this box. I've had this for a few years now. So I should call it a spill-free funnel. It's for radiators. It comes with all these different fittings here to use. A couple different radiator caps. If you look down here, you can see I got a radiator cap on it with a 90 degree to come up here. See the bubbles in it. And this is what we call burping out the system. I'm waiting for this here to go down. And the other thing I like about this is because I could pretty much just kind of walk away from this and do other things. So it makes it so nice when I can do that. Sorry, I'm trying to fight the rain here. Look on the windshields here. We well, you notice we've been getting some rain spots. So I'm trying to fight it. I'm trying to get this done. So I can get it back to her. Now when you burp out your system, it's going to take about 30 minutes or so. If it takes a little longer than 30 minutes, so what? The more you let it burp out, the better the system is. Because if not, what happens, the system vapor locks up and then it overheats on you. And that's a bad thing if it overheats on you. All right, I've had it running for a while here, burping the system out. Really ain't getting no air no more. A good way to tell if you got the system burped out is if your fans have kicked on, which mine have kicked on. Let's see if I can sit, hold my cigarette down here. You see, you ain't seeing no smoke off my cigarette. So the fans have kicked on. The other thing you want to do is you want to turn your defroster on high. And you fill up here. And, you know, see if you can feel heat. If you feel heat, you're doing good. You just about got it burped. I'm going to let it run here just a couple more minutes and then I'm going to shut it off and I'm going to take that little tank off, my little funnel. One thing you want to do and you know and I kind of messed up because if you look I had my truck sitting down here where it started going downhill. I don't know if it's kind of hard to tell that on this camera but it's actually going downhill right here. Right in there is where it was sitting at. 
But when you do this, I wasn't thinking about it. So a point to you, make sure your vehicle is pretty much level. Because you need this here, the water where it's going in, you need it at its highest point. So that way gravity will flow. As you can see, we're not really getting no bubbles anymore. But it is circulating. Like I said, we're going to let it run here a couple more minutes and I'm going to shut her off and do it up. The other thing that's cool about this thing here is it's got this little plunger here. Just stick it down in the hole. Good. Now you're going to lose a little bit of fluid, but you're not going to lose a whole lot. And just bring it over here and put it in the overflow tank. See, this way you don't have a big old mess. Now you're going to lose a little bit when you take off the radiator cap, but I mean, you're going to lose some fluid. There's no way around it. But you're not going to lose a whole bunch of it. See, that goes down in the radiator. That sits on top of there. And it just sits in there. It, don't it ain't tight. It just holds it. Put the cap back on. This thing is in such a weird place down here. There's really no room to get to it. I don't know why they design such stupid stuff like this, but they do. Make sure cap's all the way on. Start it back up. The most time consuming thing you can do with this thing. Like I said, the water pumps about 30, 40 minutes to do on this, but you're gonna spend an hour or so, you know, uh, flushing out the system if you do, and then get it to burp. And if you don't spend at least a good rule of thumb, at least 30 minutes getting uh, uh, all the air out of the system, you ain't got it all, trust me. Well, that wraps it up. As you can see, we are done. All back together. The only thing I do is just top off the overflow tank. But we're going to sit here and let it run by another 20 minutes just to make sure she doesn't overheat. But other than that, I don't see it happening. I'd say we're in good shape. Thank you guys. I appreciate y'all watching my videos. It's starting to sprinkle now. So I think I might have beat the rain. Thank you. Give me a thumbs up if you like it.